Before we start moving anything into the new shed, I thought while it was empty, it'd be a good time to lay down an epoxy coating on the bare concrete floor. I've had the displeasure of working in sheds that don't have a coated floor, and they're almost always a dusty, oil-stained metal box of sadness. The floor coating is the first step in making the shed into an oasis, away from the troubles of everyday life. In this video, I'll take you through the entire process of spot cleaning, etching, preparation and finally laying down the epoxy coating along with the vinyl flakes. We've chosen this die marked epoxy coat I found at the big green box up the road, which is a light grey colour with dark grey and black vinyl flakes. For our 9 by 7 metre shed, we needed two kits. Alright, let's do this. <laughs> While the shed is brand new, the concrete slab still needed quite a bit of cleanup before the epoxy could be applied. The slab was poured in late May of 2023 and it was left in the open for a few months before being built in August. In this time it acquired some filth in the form of tree sap and various forms of animal stool. After clearing the floor, the next thing that needed to happen was a good blowout. Then I could get stuck into those stains. I picked up this concrete cleaner and got to work, pouring it out onto the worst of the stains and letting it soak for a while as per the instructions. I then took to it with the broom with the stiffest bristles we had and gave it a good sweep which helped lift most of the stains. For the more stubborn ones, I picked up some hard bristle attachments for the drill and attacked those chunky bits. Once the cleaner had time to do its thing and I found some more suitable footwear, I gave it all another once over with the broom and then the slab needed to be rinsed off. I had three or four goes at getting all the suds hosed away, using the broom to help push the standing water out. I wanted to get as much of the suds out as I could so that it wouldn't interfere with the etch. My partner Jade arrived home after taking the baby swimming and helped a bit which made it a little easier. The cleaner seemed to work pretty well, getting a good amount of dirt and grime off the floor. I had a little visitor while I was working away, so I took a short break to say good day. The spot cleaning was the most time consuming part of the job, but it seems well worth it to get the slab clean for the etch to work effectively. On to the etching now. The epoxy kit came with this granulated etch that had to be mixed with warm water. The etch was poured out in sections around 3 meters by 3 meters and spread out with the broom. It was then left for a few minutes to fizz up and do its thing before rinsing off with the hose. I ended up using both batches of etch to clean the entire slab. After etching, the slab was left for a week before applying the epoxy. The manufacturer's recommendation is to leave it for at least 72 hours to fully dry out. I gave it another blowout and then taped up the plastic under the frame so I could paint underneath it. Mixing the epoxy is a 1 to 1 ratio of parts A and B and has to be mixed in a clean bucket using the mixer provided. It apparently shouldn't be mixed with your mixing attachment on your drill. After mixing, the epoxy needs an induction time, in my case half an hour, where it's just left to sit before painting. I'll use that time to sort out the vinyl flakes into equal portions in these plastic containers, just measuring by eye. I'll only use six of the eight containers since the floor area should be covered using only one and a half of the epoxy kits. To spread the flakes, I picked up this fertilizer spreader from the hardware, which I hoped would help get an even distribution. Once the induction time was up, I set myself up to roll the epoxy. I marked the walls up with tape to make about 3x3 3 3 metre squares and then got to it. I started by cutting in the edges with a brush and then rolled on the first square section. Some bubbles formed on the surface, so I rolled back over them, which seemed to fix it 
and then I threw out the vinyl plates. The fertilizer spreader did an alright job of getting the flakes spread out, but I found myself still throwing the flakes by hand to even out the distribution. Laying down the epoxy took about 40 minutes total, not including having to mix another batch and waiting another half hour for the induction process. I only used half of the second epoxy kit. The instructions say not to do this, but I'd rather try and use it later under the house than mix the full batch and definitely waste it all. I'll let you know how that turns out. The kit says one coat is enough, so that's all it got, and the coverage with that was pretty darn good. The next steps in the shed project will be to find the suitable material with which we can line the walls and ceiling, along with insulation. It's a subtropical area where we are, and tin sheds tend to get very oven-like in the summer months. Also, we'll need to concrete a driveway to get the cars and heavy tools in the shed, and electricity would be nice. Thanks for watching to the end, I really appreciate it. If you like the cut of my jib and reckon I deserve a beer for my troubles, check out my PayPal link in the description to make a one-off donation. Here's cheers. <laughs>